let's talk about your year in or two years in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. How was that? Were you was it a regular college or was it just a seminary type college where yeah. it was all seminarians? Yeah, it was a seminary college. Okay. And there were 130, 40 seminarians uh, there from different dioceses all around Louisiana or all around Texas, um, other parts of the of the country. Tennessee, I believe. Uh, I believe there was a guy from Florida at that time as well. Um, it was a huge, huge shock for me. It was... I. Going to college and going to the University of Houston, I always went from home. Uh-huh. So, you know, I went and did my classes, came back, hang out with friends, but came back home. Um, so I never had like the dorm experience. Going to Louisiana in seminary, it was my first experience of going to school with actual people and not being able to leave and go back home um, on a daily basis. That was definitely tough for me. Uh, I kind of, I'm kind of like to be my own man, just kind of mm-hmm. do what I do. And then that's it. Uh, Buy but, your own groceries yeah, and yeah, all of that precisely. stuff. Precisely. Do your own laundry. Precisely. Precisely. And that we still did. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but yes, no, absolutely. Um, you, you know, just kind of be my own man, do what I do and go back home. You know, if I'm social, being intentionally social and then, you know, I retreat and kind of have my time to myself. Um, but that wasn't the case in Louisiana. <laughs> um, we had a regulated time for prayer. Okay. Um, evening prayer, morning prayer, even night prayer at the end of the night. Um, there were lunches and mandatory dinners that we had to attend. Okay. Um, there was mass in the evening, uh, excuse me, in the, in the middle of the day. And then there were classes in between. So it was a pretty rigid schedule. Very rigid schedule. Um, you, you, if the time to yourself will be the time in which you are not studying or are not in class. How much time um, is that during the day? During the day... Or is it mostly just night? It could vary depending on the classes, but during the day, not more than six hours before um, before night, for okay. sure. For sure, not more than six hours. Um, sometimes it can be maybe three. It depends on kind of like your class load and how much you had. Um, on the weekends, the weekends were usually free. Um, after morning prayer and mass, you probably had the rest of the Saturday by um, to your to yourself which you would probably have to make time to study, that kind of stuff. Same of thing course. on Sunday. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So the other guys that were with you, they were also college graduates? Yeah. So some were college graduates and they did the, the uh, pre-thee program, mm-hmm. just the two years, and you, you'd mm-hmm. obtain a, a bachelor's in philosophy. And then others were starting in different various levels of college. So some could have had one year of college, maybe two years of college. Some could have had no college at all. So they straight started, out of high school, straight out. Yeah. Of, exactly. Straight out of high school. There were a couple of older guys who had you know, just kind of um, who just been working um, I mean, guys in their 30s, late 30s and 40s or whatever, who would have worked all their lives and thought, OK, now's the time to really um, kind of get into what my calling is. And then they would kind of start that process as well, depending on where they were or what their bishop mandated that they do. Um, so we had guys all across the board. What did you say your degree was in again? Uh, nutritional sciences. Is there any way that you could use that in the priesthood? <laughs> so I like my mom. Somehow, yeah. Maybe use, um, right? I mean, perhaps yeah, be, yeah. you know, in charge of the priest's nutrition and, the, you know, the you archdiocese know, or something like that. It, it, there's a, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, there's no, there's relatively no passion um, that could be matched to my desire of actually serving and being a pastor. So sure, if, I mean, if I was ever called to do that, probably. If there was I, a position would, in the archdiocese. If there was a position in the archdiocese, I would look, I would look away. The, the thing is, you to be effective in, in such a field, you'd have to have your master's okay. uh, to be a dietitian, really. Okay. Um, so I, I don't really have much true credentials in order to kind of serve. And I mean, I can give tips and that, that kind of stuff. But, I have heard about priests that were, you know, doctors and all that. Yeah, those exist so, for sure. For so sure. did anyone ever say to you, hey, let's pursue this. Let's go get your master's. And my dad would do that all the time. So <laughs> so what's next? He would he would ask. So so are, when you're done with St. Mary's and you obtain your master's um, and could you do more? Could you be a doctor? Could you have your Ph.D.? And I would say, yeah, I could, I could. So when are you going to start that? Um, never. <laughs> um, I, Do, I, you I, don't, I don't see don't, yourself don't. doing anything like that, even in the capacity of uh, within the church? No, not no. at all. So you're not you're strictly thinking about thinking of being a pastor, a pastor, a pastor of uh, 
Nice place, maybe St. Faustina. I'm going to have to kick Father Dad out. <laughs> Not anytime soon, of course. Um, and, and then you know, just kind of working in the vineyard, uh, working to, to, to um, the harvest is plenty and send, send harvesters for the harvest. Is, that's, those are my thinking. That's my, what I feel as if God is calling me to do. Anything else is kind of sort of by the wayside. So those two years in Louisiana, how often did you get back to Houston? Um, <laughs> Was it two years straight? Often, no, or? Oh, no. I, I came back quite often. Um, uh, maybe more often than any other guys. <laughs> oh, really? So it wasn't so, just so Christmas we, and Thanksgiving. No, it, it wasn't was, Christmas and Thanksgiving. So sometimes we'd have a three-day weekend. Um, you, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I'd dart straight to Houston um, and then maybe sleep on the couch or whatever have you, stay a day and, and then come right back. Um, and that would happen maybe every six weeks or something like that. And of course there was Thanksgiving and then there was Christmas, of course. Um, some, sometimes spring break, uh, I would definitely come back at every single opportunity that I got, I would come back to Houston. Did your dad say, oh, here's our rebel here. <laughs> the sure. prodigal son. I'm sure, I'm sure he wanted to, but he was, he was, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But he's already warmed up at that point. He's already oh, yeah. warmed up a yeah, lot. He's, too. he's at that point. He. He was accepting. He, he was accepting that this is what his son was doing, but open just in case his son decided, you know what, I can leave. I can I can pursue other stuff, other ventures. Um, but no, at that point, I think my family was just kind of sort of going into the okay, how do we appropriate this with our lives? Does that make it more difficult for you the fact that your dad wasn't as open in the beginning? No. No. So you had your mind set. Uh, you know, my mind was set. You know, and, and many, many guys, this is a very good question. Many guys, um, and many people have asked me that question. Like, Doesn't that make you feel just kind of sad? Now, mind you, my dad has provided, my mom and my dad have provided every single venture of uh, seminary. The car that I drive, the cell phone that I use. And they've been extremely supportive. It's just their verbal disagreement. <laughs> really, that, <laughs> that, that, that I, one would have to deal with. But. Um, I've already expected it. Like, this is so far, this is out of space as far as what the Nigerian ideal is. I, I dare I say right now that if I ever left mm -hmm. and if I ever had a son and he told me that um, I want to be a priest, I'd say, why? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's, I get it. <laughs> I get it. But Just because that has been ingrained in your yeah, mind. Yeah, for sure. For that sure. this is what. Yeah. A Nigerian is supposed to do for sure, for sure. And and I would also, I, I definitely, you know, for, for guys who are discerning, I, I do, there's something to be said about what a vocation is. Um, Father Dat, in that initial interview um, with me, October 2013, and I mentioned um, how I'd, I'd like to be a father. I'm still conflicted about being a priest. He mentioned that a great priest could also be a great father. And I was sold. And I thought, okay, wow. And so being a priest or going to seminary should not be an escape uh, from maybe just our natural obligations of wanting to father, wanting to give. Um, and if it is, then one should probably look elsewhere because the priesthood is only going to be damaging for the person and mm -hmm. for the congregation. So you have to be really integrated and really rooted in your own um, your own self with a healthy understanding of who, who you are in God in order to be able to give appropriately in the way that God has created for that person.